Hey, President Biden released his proposed 2024 budget yesterday. Now, these proposed budgets are messi messaging tools more than anything else. And the message the president sent made uh, the priorities of his party transparent. Uh, does that include anything important to working families, inflation, crime, border security? Well, I know that's a rhetorical question. We all know the answer. Well, how should Republicans react to the president's big government priorities? Well, join me now to discuss this and more is Dr. Dave Bratt. He is a former member of Congress who now serves as the dean of Liberty School of you know, Liberty University School of Business. Dr. Bratt, welcome back to the program. Hey, great to be on. Thanks, Tony. Now, I, I want to play a clip of the president yesterday because I think it's very telling. Um, and I'm going to get you to respond to this because I think uh, I think you had time to digest the president's budget. And I think it tells a lot yep. about his priorities. So uh, play clip number seven. My dad had an expression. So he, someone would come up to my dad and say, let me tell you what I value, Joe. And they say, my dad would say, no, no, show me your budget. I'll tell you what you value. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that's true. But <clears throat> looking at this president's budget, what does he value? Yeah, well, he uh, I, I looked at the overview. It's pretty interesting. You got 10 or 20 uh, new spending items that uh, don't show up uh, much. And at the very end, he's got three trillion in uh, tax increases. And he says that reduces the deficit. Uh, but what he doesn't say is that for the next 10 years, we have two trillion dollar deficits every year as far as the eye can see. And so for the young people out there, just so you know, what they, and this is this is the source of uh, today, you got breaking news with a major, the second largest bank out Silicon Valley uh, going under. And uh, we got some uh, major trembling going on uh, right now in the economy uh, because of this. And the, we got 32 trillion in debt right now, another 20 trillion in debt. So that's 52 trillion in debt in 10 years. And he shaves off three. Well, so just do the rough math. You got 50 trillion in debt at 5% interest rates minimum, right? They'll probably be higher than that, but right now they're at five. <clears throat> That's two, 200, it just do 10% of uh, 50 trillion is 5 trillion and take half of that. So two and a half trillion dollars in interest payments uh, in the budget per year. <clears throat> and so what it tells me is uh, his, his rhetoric does not line up with the numbers, right? And we're, we're going to, be bankrupt. We're already bankrupt. Uh, and that's without uh, talking about the entitlements. And the Republicans aren't going to do that. They're they're being smart there. Uh, but the Medicare and Medicaid are about a trillion each. That's two trillion. Uh, but the total mandatory spending is four and a half trillion. And there, uh, Russ Vogt is doing some yeoman's work. Uh, but I'll, I'll just put it all uh, <clears throat> right to the point. The only date that matters, the only thing we do as Republican that matters uh, we'll come down to the debt ceiling increase debate. That's the only point of leverage we have uh, as Republicans in the House. There's only one person in charge of that. It's Kevin McCarthy. The budget chair has nothing to do with that. I was on the budget committee. I know what I'm talking about. The speaker will determine that. And even the speaker will have tremendous pressure on him uh, not to really resolve these issues. And so it's incumbent on all of us to put pressure on the speaker and our Republican reps uh, for that one day uh, to make some key cuts uh, so that our kids will have an economy left. You know, Dave, the, the, the president is a little disingenuous the way he presents his budget. As you talked yeah. about, you know, yeah. reducing the deficit. Well, at at six point nine trillion spending next year would be higher than at any time during the pandemic when we had all that extra spending right, right. and it's about uh, it's about 2.5 trillion above pre-pandemic levels i yeah. mean that's 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 a growth of 55% yeah. from 2019 i mean yeah. that's incredible we cannot sustain that especially on our anemic economic growth no, and, and so <clears throat> it's important also, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve uh, bought three and a half trillion dollars worth of treasuries and enabled and accommodated and validated uh, the seven trillion in uh, Biden spending. And uh, they got no right doing that, right? Their mandate is stable prices and low unemployment. Uh, they're making decisions that have profound political implications, right? By validating seven trillion in spending, 
now our labor markets are still strong. Uh, you know, we got enough money uh, to go to war. Let's go to war with that money. Uh, the, the labor market strong firms want uh, more labor. So let's bring in uh, 5 million undocumented immigrants uh, through the border. Uh, hey, uh, we got so much money. We'll just write checks to everybody. We'll shut down the entire economy coming up. Right. So the Federal Reserve was in on this, too. And our, our system of economics is just under full frontal attack. And uh, so it's incumbent on our house. We got a, a, a bunch of people on the financial services um, Mooney, Congressman Alex Mooney, and a, and a few other my old friends are working on uh, some of those Federal Reserve issues. But it's just important to get that straight because they're unelected and they're making profound uh, economic decisions as well that validate the federal uh, government overspending. So, uh, Dr. Brett, have we have we reached the point of no return yet, or do we still have an opportunity if we exercise discipline? fiscal discipline that we could work our way out of this? You can work your way out of it. The Russ Vogt uh, is a, a principled Christian leader, head of OMB. Uh, he's working on budget right. in his group now that balances in 10 for real and gets rid of the uh, ide ideological assaults against Republicans. But, you know, the Senate and the White House are never going to validate that budget. But uh, we can go part way and demand Part of those uh, crazy additions, you know, 80,000 IRS agents in the border and some of the just the major assaults uh, on the country, you know, but, central bank uh, currency, et cetera. Those, these major things now we, we cannot have, allow to happen. But now that yeah. we have so many Americans addicted to government money, it's going yeah, to be hard right. to, to, to cut or, or roll back these yeah. programs. Yeah, and so it's intentional, and it's intentional to turn us into a socialist, if not, you know, communist Marxist society. Uh, the yeah. globalists are, are fighting like crazy, yeah, but uh, it's it's interesting times right now. This uh, Silicon right. Valley bank that cracked yesterday is going to force the Fed uh, and the government into some awkward uh, gymnastics in the weeks to come. It, it it may just take the Rep the Republicans may have to put their majority on the line to do yeah. what's necessary. Yes to yes. save yep. the country. Dr. Yep. Dave Bratt, always great to see you. Thanks so much for taking time to join us today. Hey, thanks, Tony. God bless.